So welcome everyone. Today is December 13, 2021. Please stand and join us in the pledge. The mission of the White Plains Public Schools is to educate and inspire all students while nurturing their dreams so they learn continually, think critically, pursue their aspirations, and contribute to a diverse and dynamic world. Good evening. I'd like to ask you to join us in a moment of silent reflection in the memory of Renald Richard, music teacher, Highland School. 1967 to 1991, and Joseph Williams, masonry foreman until retiring in 1982. Thank you. Thank you. And then? Yeah, uh, good evening everybody, and good evening uh, Madam President, Board of Education members. We uh, are going to make a slight adjustment to the agenda this evening, and we're gonna move the celebration of our scholar athletes up first. Um, but before I welcome Mr. Cameron uh, to the podium to celebrate our outstanding scholar athletes, I do because I know what happens when this is over, everybody leaves. So I wanna take this opportunity while you're all here with us right now, just to, on behalf of myself and all the members of the White Plains City School District community, wish all of you a very, very happy and healthy holiday. We hope that you have a great holiday. We hope that you enjoy it with your families. But please remember to stay safe and stay secure and stay WP proud. And now, Mr. Cameron. Thank you, Dr. Ricca. I'd like to thank Dr. Ricca and the Board of Education uh, for the opportunity to present our student athletes with the New York State Public High School Scholar Athlete Awards this evening. This fall, our teams were very successful. Varsity Volleyball won their league championship and were 20 and 0. So Varsity Volleyball um, league championships, they were 20 and 0 before suffering a heartbreak loss in the sectional semifinals. Our Varsity football team won back-to-back -back league championships and were undefeated in league play. Our Varsity Our varsity boys soccer team were also league champions, and our girls tennis league championship came down to the last match of the season against New Rochelle. Last week, we recognized our five swimmers, one diver, and cross country runner that represented White Plains High School in the New York State Championships. Next Tuesday, we'll be hosting our fourth NCAA scholarship signing. As the athletic director, I am very proud of the White Plains Tigers for all the championships and individual accomplishments. This fall, 50 athletes recognized as all league, 13 athletes recognized for all section, two athletes recognized for all conference, three athletes recognized for all section honorable mention. Our football team had lineman, wide receiver, and linebacker of the year. Our volleyball team had the section one player of the year. Girls swim, 200 free, finished eighth in the New York State Championship. There were almost 800 schools in New York State, and we had a real A team that finished in eighth. We had a 200 medley that finished in ninth. Individual girl swimmer placed ninth in the 50 free, a diver and cross country runner that finished in the top 30 of the New York State Championships. One swimmer placed first and won both the 500 and 200 free in the New York State Championships and was named All-American two times. Certainly a season to remember for the White Plains Tigers. More importantly, as I talk to our coaches and student athletes all the time, is what we're doing tonight. Tonight we're recognizing 166 White Plains Tiger varsity athletes at New York State, as New York State Public High School Athletic Association, excuse me, Scholar Athlete Association, Scholar Athlete Award winners. In addition to the 166 varsity athletes that earned over a 90 GPA while coming to school every day and practicing and traveling, 
Seven of our ten fall varsity teams qualified for the New York State Public High School Athletic Association Team Award. For a team to receive this award, 75% of the team needs to have over a 90% grade point average or higher. For the seven teams, I would like to congratulate girls cross country, boys cross country, field hockey, girls soccer, girls swim and dive, volleyball, and tennis for being recognized as New York State Public High School Athletic Association Scholar Athletic Team. Our first coach I'd like to call up is our varsity swim dive coach with 44 scholar athletes, Coach Gil Martin. Thank you all for coming tonight. It's so wonderful to see everybody here and back together. Um, I want to congratulate the team and I know that there's a lot of people, so at, as I call your name, if you could just stand up and then at the conclusion, if the athletes could go outside for a nice picture or photo opportunity. Louisa Nierhoff, Captain. Christine Agaman. Saskia Aikman, Angeline Argelis, Taryn Becerra, Kayla Berger, Madison Bogart, Teresa Castro, Kelly Castatino, Jenny Dang, Nicole R.U.K., Irais Galindo, Karen Gallegos, Alexandra Garcia, Itzel Garcia, Cecilia Gomez, Kara Ha, Riley Hendrickson, Maya Allen, Celia Holden, Grace Ricky, Maya Jaguti, Alyssa Kimball, sorry, um, Zoe Kaczynski, Priya Kumar, Kaylin Lala Kappa, Genesis Leon, Sophia Levy, Molly Hazen, Rihanna Lira, Leslie Maldonado, Isabella McGuire, Catalina Ramirez, Sal Marina, Alexa Reina, Emma Mayo, Sarah Rodriguez de la Verio, Quinn Sterling, Zelda Sutter, Zen Taborda, Emily Tendazzo, Lizzie Torado, Ava Viola, Tiffany Yan. Can you imagine I have to do all the averages for all these people? <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Athletes, if you could stand, thank you so much. Thank you, athletes. And if you, athletes, if you could just go right into the hallway now, that'd be super. Thank you, board. Thank you, Mr. Cameron. Congratulations to the girls from the dive team. Well, that's about a third of the auditorium, so <laughs> come out here as quick as possible. Um, next up, I'll have both of our cross country coaches, Coach Hildago and Coach Singleton, who have 40. <laughs> Student athletes with over 90 average. Both teams also won the team award for the state. All right, so it was an amazing season with an, ama with an amazing group of athletes. Our scholar athletes for girls cross country: Ariana Allende, Julia Beckman, Sophie Ginsberg, Isabella Mitov. Gianna Priori, Captain Mia Priori, Abigail Roman, Ariana Ronan, Caroline Schick, Captain, Rena Stangolini, Captain, and Rachel Villacorta. Good evening, everybody. For the boys, we had 28 out of our 34 athletes have a 90 or above average, and this group amassed 68 A minuses, 90 A's, and 121 A pluses. <laughs> when you retire, you can do this sort of thing. All right, so here we go. Here's our list. Jackson Beck, Benjamin Goldman, Captain, Emiliano Juarez, Captain Aiden Morgan, Timmy Mastro Giovanni, Captain Abraham Caceres, Ryan Chung, Captain Marcus Chung, Yuki Watanabe, Matt Selinger, Ion Carriger, uh, Ronan Staub, who was our athlete who went to the state meet, Patrick Brown, Daniel, Daniel Chung, Joe Ferrara, Matt Viola, Ellie Goldman, Captain Alex Gagnon, 
Patrick Stanton, Captain Sean O'Donnell, Brian Mulvey, Kiernan King, Christopher George, Joey D'Amelio, Matt Diaz, Matt Captain Matthew Massette, William White, and William, I'm sorry, Matthew Weller. Coach and I are very proud of both the boys and girls in the cross country program. And remember, 150 days left to the loud skates. Thank you. <laughs> Boys and girls cross country, you can go out to the lobby and pick up your certificates and meet your coaches. <laughs> Our next team up, um, last year they had eight scholar athletes and the conversation with myself and the staff was, you know, football, it's great, kids are doing well, two back-to-back -back league championships but we want to see our kids doing better. The coaches took it seriously, the kids took it seriously, and they doubled their number from one year to the next. With 15 scholar athletes, Coach Mike Lindbergh and our varsity football team. Thank you for having me, guys. Um, very proud of this group. They really worked hard. I mean, obviously all the athletes worked hard. We're going to practice all day, going to school getting it done. Um, you know, I've been here six years, and this is by far the most we've had. Every year we've gone a little better. I'm um, really proud of the group. Um, I'm going to butcher some of the names um, because they all have nicknames, so uh, bear with me. Kenny Ortega, Jay Biondi, but Bondi. Um, Vincenzo, very Italian. Bonita, Jolie, Kristen, uh, Karan, Tabini. It says John, but he's really Rudy the Flippus. Jack Herman, Mason Lang, Nicholas Pasqualini, Nuts and Petit, Mason Rank, uh, Rhett, excuse me, that was an easy one. Jonas Sintil, Nicholas Vista, Jacob Lee, and Jefferson Boyce. Great job, guys. Congratulations, Varsity Football. Our next team up had a perfect season during the season. See, the coaches all text me and they, they email me and say, can I go first? I have the longest drive home. Can I go first? Can I go first? I try to accommodate it. Coach lives in Long Island, so um, she's next. Her, her team was perfect, 20-0. and 0. Um, Her kids were perfect, every kid over a 90 average. Our volleyball coach, Caitlin McDonald. Thank you, Mr. Cameron. Thank you to the Board of Education. Um, I, words can't describe how proud I am of this team. For them to have gone for 20 consecutive wins throughout the season was really, really unbelievable. And then with every win, you're like, well, we're undefeated. How much longer are we going to be undefeated? And that, so that feeling really kind of runs through the entire season, all season, and it's the underlying theme that you have to make sure you keep on simmer so that we keep winning games throughout the season. So I'm extremely, extremely proud of this team and what we were able to accomplish and very, looking for, very much looking forward to what we will accomplish in the future for every single one of them. Uh, we had a nice small team this year. We had nine girls on the team and for all of them to have had the averages that they had while doing what we did on the court was absolutely unbelievable. In addition to what Mr. Cameron stated before, we had one all section player of the year. So all the coaches get together at the end of the season and we vote, we say my player is better than your player because of this. And I was able to win that argument and it really didn't take a lot of arguing this year. A lot of us got together. Everyone knows how good Sequoia is at what she does. And And the best news is, is that she's only a sophomore and we really still have a lot to expect from this young lady, Sequoia Lane. 
Ladies, please stand as your name is called. Mary O'Callaghan, Sophia Alexandru, Natalie Escobedo, Amelie Singer, Giselle Lover-Vierre, Carrie Ann Sergi, Sarah Ortiz, Nyla Troncoso, and Sequoia Lynn. One last thing that I would be remiss if I didn't mention was that in addition to this, on all the other awards that they received, we had two players win all state honors, which has never happened in my tenure here in White Plains. And that is Nyla Troncoso and Sequoia Lynn. Thank you. Congratulations, volleyball. Way to go, girls. All right, next up is our field hockey team. Coach Amanda could not make it tonight. Um, any coach that said they weren't really feeling great, don't come. Definitely don't come tonight. Um, so our assistant coach, Jerry Mealy, will be doing the presentation for our varsity field hockey team. Good evening, everyone. I just want to congratulate all of our athletes. Not only were you able to compete on the varsity level, but you did so by maintaining an amazing GPA. So that is just awesome. We are, on behalf of Coach Amanda and I, we just want to say how proud we are of how you represented White Plains High School on and off the field. So congratulations, ladies. As I read your names, please stand. Olivia Alexander, Elizabeth Armagida, Greta Brooks, Colleen Brown, Tamar Brumberg, Sophia Emmer, Riley Falvey, Brianna Hammerty, Elena Ayanachi, Hannah O'Rourke, Jolie O'Rourke, Sonia Sawant, and Marissa Thompson. Thanks, Coach Mealy. Congratulations, field hockey. I will not make the same mistake our football coach made. Coach Megan Chase is not here this evening, was not feeling well, she was not in school today. So our two captains, Kristen Russo, Natasha Mendez, are gonna announce their teammates who received over 90 hours. The girls uh, soccer team had 17 of the 20 and also received the team award. Thanks, girls. Thanks, Natasha. Thanks, Kristen. Good All right, next up is our varsity girls tennis coach, Stephanie Ta. <laughs> coach has done an outstanding job. Just in her second year, the team had 19 girls on the team. The JV team, we doubled our numbers, so she's been really putting a lot of time in, in season, out of season, and it certainly shows. Coach? girls on the team and I'm so proud of them for earning the Scholar Athlete Team Award. These girls continue to impress me both on and off the court with achievements in season including making it to the league tournament and now off season with this academic achievement. 13 girls on the varsity team earned the individual Scholar Athlete Award and I'm proud to read their names tonight. 
Our seniors, Jessica Osario and Aziz Sani. Juniors, Natasha Rappa, Captain. Leah Morgan. Sophomores, Captain Brian Kraskoff. Olivia Wilkins. Sabrina Monteen. Eva Mandelbaum. Leah Dennis. And Amber Lau. Freshmen, Anna Strominger. And eighth graders, Delphine LaRosillier and Eloise LaRosillier. their continued support throughout the season. Um, a special thank to Coach Suman, our, our JV coach, for preparing the JV girls for varsity. Mr. Cameron, Ms. Dimes, and Ms. Leon Zagoya for their support and organization. Sandra Sansoda and his team for making sure our courts are always match ready. And Detective Brown and the entire security team for making our girls and families feel safe. Thank you. Girls Tennis, way to go, congrats. We have a little change of plans here. We brought our field hockey team back. Um, Coach Mealy, come on down. We left two girls off. And their parents are still here, I hope. So I left the best for last. So girls, come on up, because you deserve it. You worked really hard, and we are so proud of you. So we have Chloe Ryan. <laughs> Next up is our varsity boys soccer team. Came so close to the team award. Uh, ten of their athletes uh, had over 90 average. Coach Mike Lambert. Thank you very much. I um, just want to congratulate all of our student athletes. I think this year more than any other, going from last year, which was unique, uh, to right back into a full-time school environment along with playing a varsity sport six days a week is even more impressive uh, in my eyes this year. So congratulations to all of our student athletes. Um, varsity boys soccer, uh, as well as staying on top of their grades, also went back to back on the league championship. Um, and we had 10 players that achieved scholar athlete status. Lucas Antonucci, Eric Antonecchia, who is also a captain, Gael Bellardi, Sergio Colana, Daniel Espinoza, Jack Halpern, Milo Chris, Philip Mann, Isaiah Mercado Torres, and Steven Uche. Congratulations, boys. We soccer, good job. Last but not least, Coach Jess. Varsity cheerleading, come on down. Good evening, everybody. Congratulations to all the teams and athletes for their scholar athletes. Um, my team had Jessica Bellantoni, sophomore. Myla Bridges, senior. Lisa Glimog, senior, and Lola Plunkett, junior. Good job, ladies. Keep up the hard work. Congratulations to all of our student athletes. Um, I see the superintendent's cabinet sits up here in the front, and they do a lot for athletics, too. Um, Frank staff, all the time, we're in communication. Frank, thank you. And controls the funds. It's certainly, we have 96 coaches and 77 teams, so. Um, and Scott's office, you know, we're appointing 96 coaches every year, so. Thank you for all your support. Dr. Rick, as always, thank you. And the Board of Ed for giving us all the resources to have these type of nights, so thank you. Mr. Cameron, just a thank you to you and uh, to all of our athletic colleagues in the athletic department and our coaches and our assistant coaches. Also, even though um, we, we successfully cleared out the room, uh, <laughs> all of the parents and guardians who support our student athletes, uh, it really is a, is a tremendous community effort 
we've had a, a great fall season, and uh, I think Coach Lambert really put it well after a unique year last year. It is nice to come back and, and start to begin to at least regain some sense of normalcy. So thank you very much, Mr. Cameron. Madam President, we are now going to move on to the next part of the agenda, which is a special recognition. Um, we are this evening uh, truly bittersweet, I think, mixed emotions as we recognize um, our, our amazing colleague, Michelle Schoenfeld. And we all know Mr. Schoenfeld. Yes. We all know Mr. Schoenfeld is, is getting ready for, um, to, to begin to think about retirement and uh, we want to celebrate that, but we also want to um, really, as everything else in White Plains and as everything Michelle has been, really make it a community event. And uh, I, I want to thank John Shepard, um, well, thanks John, for helping to put together, yes! Yeah. Yeah. Helping to put together what is um, really, uh, I'm sure, going to be a, a, a touching tribute uh, to Mr. Schoenfeld. So, for the trustees, before we show the video, for the trustees and for Michelle, if you'd like to sit in the seats across from you so you get a better view, I welcome you to do that now. What a wonderful career. You have been such an asset to the White Plains School District and the White Plains community. Michelle knows everybody. She takes wonderful notes, has an iconic memory, and is one of the most caring individuals that I have ever met. Some know you as the school board clerk and expert on election rules. Some know you as a volunteer for the hospital and friends of White Plains schools. Your eye for detail and heartfelt desire to be of service has been admirable. You are one of the most convincing, professional, and strongest women I know and your dedication and service to the students of the White Plains schools is something for which you can be extremely proud. Michelle is always a wonderful gatekeeper of all of our information. She has the answer to any and every question I have ever had. I admire your kindness and your thoughtfulness. Most importantly has been your knowledge base um, that you brought to the Board of Education and to me as a new board member. And I mostly appreciate all the history that you have of this district and all that you shared with me. You've been the heart, the head in the history of White Plains and you will be missed greatly. You have been the face of the White Plains School District for as long as I can remember, not to mention the only face that I can actually look eye to eye to. If you look back to Michelle's youth, in 1948, she entered a contest that was offered by the Brooklyn Dodgers to write an essay on uh, leadership and diversity, and she won it. And to her surprise, she was asked to read it at a ball game. Michelle, words are inadequate to express the deep respect and affection I have for you. I value our friendship and collaboration, and I will miss you. Very professional and very cognizant. That what you are of the public's need to know the facts. You believe, like I believe, that sometimes doing things the old-fashioned way, that's the best way. Michelle, one of the things I've always admired was your dedication and determination when faced with technology challenges. You are truly a role model. The example you set for me and Suze growing up is what taught us to have the work ethic that we do. So to say that you are a fantastic role model is quite an understatement. You've helped so many people. You've been there like Batman. I'm really going to miss you. We're going to miss you. I'm sorry to see her retiring, but appreciative of everything she's given us community. She truly is a woman of White Plains, and we're very, very lucky to have had her. I will miss your deep knowledge and love for this district and how you always have the best advice because your advice was grounded in where we were and where we needed to go. Thank you so much for all your support mentoring, guidance. Um, you've just been incredible these past five and a half years that I've been with White Plains. The White Plains Public Schools are better off because you are here. You made a real difference. Even in the most difficult moments of your life, you were there 
taking care of your obligations and commitments. Life has uh, given you permission to sit back and relax and enjoy your family. Please make sure you do that and get really good at it. I can't believe that you spent 39 years there. You went through so many superintendents. Thank you for everything you did for me to support me when I was on the board and also everything you've done for the White Plains School District over the years. I also can't believe that when I was on the board, we had so many meetings and that you stayed awake through every single one of them. I cannot believe that. I still say that the best part of you being district clerk was knowing very early in the morning if school was going to be canceled for snow or not. Thanks for all your years of dedication to the White Plains School District. Much appreciated. Your more than 8,000 hours of service and leadership skills as past auxiliary president have left a lasting impact on our hospital and community. I'm thinking about all of the uh, efforts that you've made in partnership with us. You've made our work easier. You've been a great help to me, um, the department, and the community all these years. I'm looking forward to continuing our relationships. So you can retire from White Plains School District, but we need you here at the rec department. You've done a phenomenal, uh, unbelievable, irreplaceable job in creating a situation that um, it's going to be impossible to fill those shoes. Michelle, best of luck to you. And I know you're looking forward to spending more time with your family and those beautiful grandkids. You really uh, have done an amazing job in terms of your, your passion and your dedication to, to the students and the staff. Please remember that the same way you are always there for us, we will always be there for you. Over the years, your contributions to White Plains certainly grew. In fact, we have to ask, where would White Plains be without you? Michelle, you have served the White Plains community with distinction. Congratulations for a job well done. We love you. I don't think anyone will ever come close to touching your record of dedication as the district clerk. You know I love you. You know I care about you like a second mom. I want only the best for you. Michelle, congratulations on a great career work. We know that you're not done yet, but hopefully you'll enjoy the retirement years, do exactly what you want to do, and you'll still have all your friends and neighbors saluting you. Have a wonderful congratulatory celebration today. Congratulations! Michelle was trying to sit down and we weren't finished clapping. <laughs> Michelle, it, this is so surreal um, tonight, but I have to, um, I have to let you know, um, I, I spoke to uh, Donna McLaughlin um, as well and Tim, and as you can see, Peter um, is here, the Geigers are here, and you see everyone from the community here that recognizes you. It's, um, as, as Randy said, it's hard to even imagine my plans without you um, sitting in your office executing your job with perfection. And for that, we thank you. Um, I'll just add one little funny story and th that you know how multifaceted Michelle is. Uh, one morning we woke up to a smoky furnace and it kind of caught on fire a little bit. So, you know, we called everyone over, fire department, but. And I called Michelle, I go, Michelle, I can't come to my, my furnace. And I went on and on and on. And she said, oh, so you just put that through your homeowners. I forgot I had homeowners. <laughs> we bought the most expensive furnace that we could, and we, we named it the Michelle Schoenfeld Furnace. <laughs> But, but I say that because you never know in life when you're going to meet a friend. And I don't even know how and when we, we became friends, but I'm very um, grateful to you. Uh, your wisdom, your advice, um, 
sincerely grateful, but we'll still be friends and we'll still see you around, but enjoy this wonderful new phase of life. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we're good. Michelle, whether I'm on or not, we know each other a very long time. And I've always enjoyed our friendship. And when I first got out of the board of bed, um, and I just wound up sitting next to you in the conference room, and it was like having this brilliant little bird on my shoulder, <laughs> telling you these little facts and little issues, because the first year you're sitting there, you, you know what you want to do, but you're not sure how to do it. I was getting this mentoring and this coaching over here, and it was wonderful. And I thank you for that, and thank you for your friendship, and for everything you've done for every kid, and for the community, and for White Plains Hospital. Um, you are Batman. <laughs> <laughs> and, I love, and I love you. Thank you. Michelle, you're, you taught me how to be a board member. I knew nothing when I came to the board. And you took me aside and you quietly and kindly explained how things got done and taught me how to do this, and you're fond of knowledge about White Plains and everything White Plains, and you know everyone here. Well, um, we talk about you being related to everyone. You actually know everyone in White Plains. <laughs> so thank you so much, and we know where you live, so <laughs> we'll be there. Michelle, I just want to thank you for everything. Um, with, with all my heart, your collaboration, your professionalism, your integrity, your partnership, and all the years that you spent not only as district clerk, but as PTA leader um, and as volunteer for our school district. Um, and just the love that you, you have for us and for the district. Um, and, and I also want to mention I really appreciated that you knew shorthand, that you know shorthand. <laughs> I am one of the few people probably that you've run into who also knows shorthand. Um, my mother made me learn it when I was in high school. So I really appreciated <laughs> seeing your notes. So thank you for everything. Michelle, I, I, go ahead. No, we're going this way. I, well, it, uh, it's hard for me to say something that hasn't already been said. Um, thank you for your guidance and your wisdom. I'll enjoy, I've always enjoyed our conversations about White Plains, our different issues on the board, and, uh, and also how our conversations have strayed into our personal lives and sharing about our families as well, too. It's really uh, been wonderful to speak to you about that because really that's the most important thing uh, in all of our lives, and I know uh, your family is very important to you. And uh, for the next, for your next chapter, I know that's your focus, and that's that's uh, that's wonderful. So 39 years is a long time. I, I work in numbers, so what are we talking about in 39 years? That's at least 40 elections, right? 39 years by the numbers, at least 40 elections when we count special elections, 600 meetings. <laughs> 1,500 hours, 62 days, the equivalent of meeting time, and that's just in front of the public. Yeah, so, we're low ball. And I'm probably, in, and I'm probably being conservative. That's exactly right. But, but really, I mean, the, the commitment and time you put into my plans. Thank you so much, and uh, have a wonderful next chapter. And I know we're still going to see you, which is great for us and great for the district. Michelle, there is one thing that I can say that no one else said, and no one else has, and that's I'm here tonight because of you. Michelle showed up at a PTA council meeting one night when I was president, and somehow she managed to convince me that it was my time to step up and try and fill the shoes of Donna McLaughlin. Well, that was nine years ago, and I'm still trying to fill those shoes 
but you have been an amazing support. Um, I loved coming in and chatting with you in, in your office, and um, I'll miss that. Um, but the one thing I know that I'm not gonna miss is having you around, because I know that you're always gonna be there for us, for the board, and for the kids of White Plains. And I just wanna say thank you. One last comment, um, uh, there are three people that we haven't thanked at all, Susie, Mike, and Matthew. We want to thank you for sharing mom, grandma, and mom-in-law with us. Um, it's, it's a gift that we will treasure. Thank you so much. Shepard, John Shepard, for uh, putting it together. Uh, Michelle, you know, I, I bring a little tear in my eye every time I watch it um, because you are so loved. And this time of year, it reminds me, and I, I'll butcher the quote, so I, I won't say it, but you all know what I'm talking about. At the end of It's a Wonderful Life, I think it's a Kipling quote. Um, no man is alone who has friends. Remember when they all brought the money to George's house so he didn't lose his house? No. You have so many friends. You have so many friends, you have so many loved ones. And I, I just think uh, you should feel as warm and as loved as, as possible. I want to invite Mayor Rocha. Uh, he has a, a special message uh, this evening as well. Mayor? I have to say that when we were checking my calendar when this came in and, I, and another event came and um, Miriam comes in and says to me, what are you gonna, which event do you want? And I said, well, what's the other event? And it was Michelle's, oh, I have to go to that, I have to go to that. <laughs> 39 years, it's unbelievable. Um, we first met on the Recreation Advisory Committee as my memory served me, I was uh, chairing it as a new council member. And um, your devotion to our city, to our community, to our schools, to our kids is unrivaled. And you show up everywhere hospitals everywhere and wherever you are it's with that big heart and that love behind it and so it makes such a huge difference um, I uh, have a proclamation here it, it seems somewhat inadequate now that I know that you had uh, a furnace named after you <laughs> but for what it's worth uh, for your service to our schools our community our kids and you're, 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 the, per you're the type of person that keeps the community together that weaves a community together that's out there all the time, and I'm happy you're being recognized. Uh, I, Thomas M. Roach, Mayor of the City of White Plains, extend my congratulations, best wishes to you on the occasion of your well-earned retirement, much success and happiness in the years to follow, and I hereby, as Mayor of the City of White Plains, hereby declare Monday, December, uh, Monday, December 13, 2021, as Michelle Schoenfeld Day in the City of White Plains. Ooh. Executive Latimer in the video. Michelle knows him very well. And you also saw this evening, unfortunately, George has COVID. Yeah. He's okay. I was just talking to him right before he came over here. I told him, use this time to rest. Put your phone away. But he won't. <laughs> He'll keep working. But he sends his very best. And then, of course, Chairman Van Boyken got caught up in the contact trace. 
Um, so he couldn't come here, but they both send a proclamation in your honor. And among the other many, many accomplishments and honors that they enumerate in this beautiful proclamation, they also bestow Tuesday, December 14th, 2021, as Michelle Schoenfeld Day in the county of Westchester. So you have two days. Michelle Schoenfeld t-shirts. <laughs> What's on the agenda? <laughs> Retire. <laughs> Michelle Schoenfeld has served the White Plains City School District faithfully and well as district clerk and secretary of the Board of Education for 39 years and whereas throughout her tenure she has been through wisdom and dedication, personally instrumental in moving the school district forward and whereas Michelle has earned the respect and esteem of all members of the White Plains City School District community and whereas in appreciation for Michelle's dedication to the White Plains City School District, the Board of Education wishes to honor Michelle in a lasting fashion. Now therefore be it resolved that the White Plains City School District Board of Education upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools hereby officially dedicates through naming the assembly room at Education House 5 Homeside Lane, White Plains, New York to the Michelle Schoenfeld Assembly Room. And witness thereof. <laughs> I've enjoyed it, and I hope I've given a little back 
from what it's given me. And I thank you again, everyone. Six years ago, when I had my last board meeting, <laughs> you are a white lady treasure. Thank you. And thank you so much. trying to hide back there. There she yeah. is, Dr. Oxer. Yeah. So, so many friends here. And, and Ralph DeMarco. Ralph DeMarco, of course. Oh, Ralph, we're not paying you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'd never charge. He would never do anything. Hi, Ralph. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> wow, I didn't see you. I'm sorry. I do, um, before we move on to the agenda, I do want to, I, I have to thank Huge thank you to my partner Eliza Torres, who did so much to make tonight come together. Thank you, Eliza. Thank you. Okay. I'll just add um, thanks to our mayor. We appreciate you as always. Thank you. Yeah, and and I just have to thank. Um, Oh, our cameraman, our cameraman, we just thank you so much. We know we, we, we got in a last minute video and you did it with the grace and the patience that you always do. So thank you, John. Um, we just appreciate you. Okay. So next we'll have, um, we'll have announcements by the board members, um, but before we, we um, go forward. I, I just, I have a, a statement I'd like to, to make, um, and it'll be brief. This was quite a night for us, um, honoring our scholar athletes and celebrating our own Michelle Schoenfeld. But I wanted to take a moment to address an article many of you may have seen in LOHUD regarding the sale of the Ridgeway Country Club. In the statement, it was, there was a sentence that struck a hard nerve with the board. It said, White Plains doesn't have the best school district. It was beyond comprehension how such a statement could have been made with what we believe is limited knowledge of who and what we are. We will respond to the comments officially, but we want to take the opportunity to invite the author of such comments to please come for a visit and see firsthand what a groundbreaking model school district recognized by the U.S. Secretary of Education is like. Thank you. <laughs> so um, 
I just have, I got a few comments, not about that. Um, this last few days has been very, very interesting. Um, on the one hand, and I'll, I'll get into that in one second, I was reminded of the extraordinary passion and dedication of the superintendent, the cabinet, the administrators, the teaching staff, and the non-teaching staff of our schools. I understand some people stop me on the street, not many, and they say, well, they get paid to do that. Well, we all get paid to do something. But that doesn't always mean that we do it with such passion. So the first thing I went to was the curriculum meeting. And at the curriculum meeting, oh, I'm sorry, the first thing I went to was International Day at Post Road, and it was wonderful. Each, each classroom was a different country, and the kids were so into it. It was just, it was wonderful to see that. But then I went to the curriculum meeting the other night, and they rolled out some ideas uh, that were just wonderful. Gary West talked about uh, intermediate level music technology program, which is just amazing. Richard Dillon, the head of uh, social studies, talked about an elective for the, uh, based upon the United States Constitution, which seems to be incredibly fitting in this country right now. And Doug Kronk and Jennifer Hammond King talked about a writing seminar being brought to students in a, in a seminar format to expand writing and to help kids express themselves writing, and not just writing for a grade, but writing for themselves. And that's very, very important. I, I love to write, uh, and that's really important to me. And on the following evening, we had um, pupil services and special ed, and what was discussed was a possible redesign, or put on the table a redesign of the high school, adding a third house. And in doing so, creating smaller communities and having every kid be assigned uh, a counselor, and a healthcare worker, and at least three adults that they can be in touch with, and in that way, in this very, very large high school, creating communities to support kids, to further social emotional learning, which seems to be so critical right now. Um, there was also discussion of um, what it's been like coming back to school for some of the special ed kids after having been out a year, and the difficulties that the teachers are facing, not just how hard they're working, and, and to celebrate the accomplishments as opposed to always highlighting some negativity. I tell my spin students, I'm a spin instructor, we always tell ourselves what we can, can't do, we need to tell ourselves what we can do. And in this district, and I'm sending a message to that person, we do a lot, and we have a lot to be proud of. So that was my, those were my comments. Uh, that was, I might have missed something, people will pick up on that. But thanks everybody for what you do every day, the whole crew, the MAS crew's back there. Thank you guys. <laughs> just I, quickly, tonight is the uh, Lower Hudson Education Coalition Legislative Committee where our county legislators and regional legislators met and discussed public issues uh, that are um, affecting a lot of the school districts in the area. Uh, topics range from mental health uh, for our students and our teachers as well as funding initiatives. Um, I caught about an hour of it prior to this board meeting, and sh uh, Senator Shelley Mayer was discussing foundation aid and how we were, she was helpful, uh, instrumental in acquiring 60% of the aid. Um, last year, we're on target for acquiring 80% of the foundation aid this year, and she's hoping for a full restore, a restore, restoration of our foundation aid going forward, um, as well as recommitting to um, giving SED, State Education Department, the resources they need to assist local districts in uh, some of the mandates that were given. Uh, she committed to the diversity, equity, and inclusion initiative from the state ed and uh, committed to helping districts with that initiative as well as um, acknowledging the need for more mental health funds for our teachers and students. Um, and that was this evening and I also attended the craft fair on Saturday which was awesome. Uh, it was in the room right around the corner from here. I got to purchase some uh, beautiful student artwork from the art associate, uh, was it the National Junior Art um, Group? Uh, it was just a great afternoon, um, and a lot of uh, local vendors were there. The galleries were wonderful. That's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to add to um, Charlie's comments um, about the um, special ed committee meeting. Um, we talked about um, that, that was.
special that way. We talked about senior internships. Um, uh, Mr. Emily, um, I'm Mr. Emily, sorry. <laughs> Emily Martinez. Martinez, sorry about that. Mr. Martinez um, came in um, as a new principal and had a very, very strong interest in starting a, an internship program. Um, and we gave him a lot of support, and so he's put together a committee, and um, he's working on having our seniors here um, spend time uh, trying to figure out what it is that they want to do after high school. Um, internships in the community, um, working in uh, neighborhoods, and working um, in, in different fields um, in, in the community. Um, and so we're looking forward to working with him on that and, and supporting our students. Um, as I told him, I did a number of internships myself as a student, and um, I, I had my children um, do the same thing, and they've gotten full-time jobs out of it, and I'm very proud of it for that. Um, I also wanted to mention that I went to the um, White Plains Rec Committee meeting, and I don't have my notes with me, but I can quickly say that it was the uh, master planning meeting, just as we're doing a master planning for the school district and for the city. This was for the rec department and the parks department. We basically gave our wish list of things that we would like to see. And the two main things that we talked about were the senior center, which was uh, destroyed basically by the flooding. Um, and they're still trying to renovate and give our seniors a place uh, to be. And the other thing was a community center for our kids. We have children that are in that in-between age where they're no longer doing sports and they're no longer doing um, after-school centers. And then the middle schoolers who really, after Friday night skate in sixth grade, have nowhere to go. Um, so we're, we're trying to find a way to build tr a true community center that would take us from our younger kids all the way through our seniors. And they have a website, um, and, and anyone who has any suggestions, um, I would ask you to go on the website, and they would truly um, appreciate any ideas um, for the, again, it's the Parks and Recreation Comprehensive Plan. public high school championships for his girl swimming up in Ithaca. So uh, I'm not that much of a swimming fanatic, I'm a, I'm a dad fanatic. So I was proud enough to be able to go there, my daughter swam. It's great watching White Plains and all the other kids just do their best. And uh, if you look on the wall of that Ithaca pool and you see some really impressive people uh, swam in that pool. And there's a lot of talent in New York and uh, it was just a really great event. So I'll try to be brief. Technology has really allowed me to attend like lots of things and so I was able to get to the Westchester Putnam School Boards Association legislative advocacy meeting and also their program on understanding and mitigating conflict um, that was presented by a professor from uh, Teachers College, Columbia Teachers College. Swarthmore College uh, did a presentation on reimagining public education post-pandemic, a focus on equity and racial justice with distinguished education professor Pedro Nogueira and professor Joseph Nelson of Swarthmore. Um, I got to a special ed coffee talk. Um, I want to give a shout out to Eastview's uh, Veterans Day program, um, which pre-pandemic I used to go to every year. Um, the last two years they've recorded it. It is moving and rousing and the kids take real ownership of that program. Um, it's been very rewarding. Uh, Ridgeway PTA meeting, um, Nurse Desiree um, answered lots of questions about health. Uh, Mrs. Torres and Ms. Jackson gave updates, uh, really well attended. Thank you to PTA Council. Um, we heard updates on uh, the New York State PTA Conference and they are also planning a speaker 
um, a social media um, for students and, and parents, so we really thank the PTAs for everything they're doing. Uh, high school guidance meeting, going to college with an IEP and a 504. Um, the guidance really has, a uh, department has really put together some wonderful programs um, for our students. Um, there were local colleges that were presenting as well as our own guidance department. Um, the um, elementary science curriculum, um, I've, I've joined uh, their first meeting, which was to go over the New York State science learning standards. There's another meeting tomorrow I'll be attending, um, looking at evaluation of vehicles. So um, lots of great things going on in this school district. Yeah, I just Sorry, I just forgot one thing. Uh, this afternoon, Dr. Yen and I attended a SEED meeting at the, uh, at the high school. So SEED stands for Students Seeking Educational Equity and Diversity. It is a, a national program. We have a club, we have a chapter here. And students, a very diverse body of students run the meetings under the guidance of some, uh, Wendy Dale, and I can't remember the other person right now. Um, and they, uh, they discuss topics that are important to them, social topics, um, political topics, and they lead the discussion. And they felt it was very important after the, the November 4th shooting at Oxford High School in uh, Michigan to have a meeting today. And I attended that meeting and it lasted about two hours. And um, the meeting on the one hand was very hopeful because when you listen to students, and we have a tendency not to listen to students, and not to listen to young people, young people are the barometers of their time. And most of the time we talk at them sort of like the Charlie Brown, wah, 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 if you ever watch that. But we need to listen to them, because they're on the ground and they're experiencing this, and this is their life. So I was hopeful um, at listening to them, but on the other hand, um, it was very depressing, because it's almost become normalized for them. This is part of their high school experience. People getting shot uh, by weapons, going to school and being afraid, having lockdown drills. Um, I reflected that when I was in high school in the 1970s, the biggest fears I had was a coach yelling at me because I didn't do something right on the ice, or whether Annie was gonna break up with me. Um, one of those happened one day, but anyway. Um, we need to do something about this issue and we need to help kids get through this and all of us get through this and to address this. And I just want to thank those kids today who had the courage to speak their truth. And that is an amazing thing that happens at White Plains High School. Another amazing thing. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, first thing I'd like to do is welcome our White Plains High School liaisons um, to speak if you're still here. Come on up. Oh. <laughs> I knew you were there. I give me that out. Good to see you. Hey, <laughs> uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're just here really to deliver some good news from all these schools within the White Plains High School School District. So I'm gonna start off with Church Street. So Church Street actually celebrated a computer science week where uh, they learned how to code, uh, they learned computer science, how to help the world, and how uh, they even had a coding dance party. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty great. Uh, the fifth graders also had a Zoom meeting with a computer scientist who's using coding to protect the environment. Uh, they also, with the help of Queen's donations, the fourth and fifth graders are creating uh, no sew blankets for animals and um, elderly at local shelters and at uh, an elderly adult day center. Second is uh, Ridgeway. So they're doing a outdoor celebration as a way to celebrate the seasons and include families. Um, each grade also chose a specific day and time where they're putting on a short grade-wide presentation for families. Classes are meeting outside at the bus loop to sing song and recite poetry. Families are invited to attend and observe and most grades have followed the presentation with hot cocoa shared between teachers, families, and students. In general, it's just a great way for them to engage with families and school communities. Uh, also, there's uh, Rochambeau. Uh, last, uh, last Thursday, Rochambeau had their quarter one award assembly. Over the third of the students received various awards, like high honor roll and uh, character education awards. It was in general, it was a nice celebration uh, of our students. 
We also want to celebrate Rochambeau's junior and varsity wrestler, Jonathan uh, Arana, placed fourth in a recent tournament, and they are right at him. Rochambeau is gearing up for its annual holiday feast, which will be held on Thursday, December 23rd. This is just an exciting time filled with great food and great fellowship right before the holiday season begins. Good evening, everyone. My name is Zaida. I am co-president of White Plains High School along with Alex. And again, as Alex said, we're here to share some good updates. Um, at Mamaronek Avenue Elementary School, this month is Kindness Month. They are learning ways to show kindness to all. They had an entire school read aloud of the mitten tree and have a school-wide donation drive. Hats, scarves, and mittens collected will be donated to the Blithdale Children's Hospital in Valhalla. One student and their family handmade 121 items. This month, for the MAS Principal's Corner, parents in grades K, 1, 2 were invited to ELA night learning all about our formative assessment tool and approaches to reading. Their band, orchestra, and chorus are preparing for another magical winter concert. It will be recorded and shared for all to enjoy. At Eastview Middle School, Eastfield faculty, staff, and students are sharing pictures of family celebrations and rituals for this holiday season. As you walk through our school, you will see on their TV screens pictures of their students and their families. They want students to feel welcomed and affirmed by seeing themselves as part of the learning environment. At Highlands Middle School, on December 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, all students will be participating in a skating trip. Each team will be spending a half day at Eversole Skating Rink for our annual skating trip. On December 22nd and 23rd, Eastview students will engage in the AVID Steps to Success program. It is a mid-year program supporting college and career readiness for all sixth grade students. The goals of this is to raise student awareness with focus on college and career development. It also provides students with exposure to the academic commitments, global citizenship, and community involvement necessary for the college pathway. And it also provides strong and healthy student models for expected behaviors from grades 6 through 12 for college readiness. The other day, Eastview faculty, staff, and students are sharing pictures of family celebrations. Oh, I said that already. <laughs> and we have one more update from Post Road Elementary School that we just got in today. And they celebrated World Cultures Day on November 19th. All students had a chance to visit five countries over the course of the day to learn about the cultures and traditions of others around the world. While recognizing their own culture, they learned how we are different and yet the same. Thank you to the Board of Education member Charlie Norris and Dr. Ricca for visiting us that day. Our girls on the run team ran a small food drive as their final service project. They were able to feed families in need in the post road community. We are proud of their efforts on their off on and off the track. Uh, and then of course, for uh, White Lakes High School, we want a short thank you for Mr. Martinez and Dr. Rica for their formative and reassuring assembly on school safety and the impact of social media in response to the recent social media disturbances after the Oxford High School shooting. This effectively demonstrated the school's prioritization of safety to maintain a healthy learning environment. And we are currently working with Mr. Martinez on figuring out a way to educate the student body on what signs to look out for amongst our peers that would indicate a potential threat, further ensuring the safety of our school. Thank you again to our administration for acting swiftly and accordingly. Alex, uh, thank you so much. You, you make it so that my superintendent's reports are like cut in half now. Uh, you do such a great job with your updates and thank you so much to both of you. Um, you're tremendous students. And we really appreciate you coming out tonight. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Rucka, yes. I just wanted to re just throw out one more thank you and congratulations. Um, I completely forgot about this weekend's um, high school PTA craft fair and I wanted to congratulate the PTA um, for another great year, I went out and did some shopping and spoke to some of our longtime vendors who told me it was very well attended this year. It was great, great to see everyone come back out. They were very happy, and all of the money that was raised goes to our senior scholarships. 
So thank you again and congratulations to Sandra Alexandru and her, and her staff and her team, I should say. I know exactly how much hard work goes into that event. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. Well, it's funny, I, I actually uh, I had somebody reach out to me via Facebook and say, uh, that, that doesn't live in White Plains, that came to the craft fair. I said, well, the craft fair was really fantastic, but oh, wow, is White Plains High School big. <laughs> what is White Plains High School big? I said, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. pretty big. <laughs> um, quick COVID-19 update. Numbers are going up, nothing that we haven't talked about before. We have to continue to be vigilant and continue to make sure that we're watching ourselves and our loved ones for signs and symptoms and uh, continue to follow those best practices to try to stem and spread. Um, we have seen great turnout at our pop-up vaccination opportunities here th throughout the school district. And I wanna thank uh, Maggie Rasiopo and our health services professionals, uh, as well as our community partners for allowing us to have those opportunities I do also have to give a special nod to Deb Algarten for continuing to champion that work, so thanks, Deb, for that as well. Um, we will uh, continue to watch. Uh, we are in the process, of, actually tomorrow morning, we have a meeting with um, our, our uh, testing provider and Dr. Shalita Amler from the Westchester County Department of Health, and we're gonna be talking in part um, also about gateway testing when we return after the recess. What gateway testing is, is a opt-in for children and uh, uh, colleagues, uh, employees in the district um, following the recess uh, to be able to get a baseline test for anybody who wants to opt in, so positive or negative. And that would be taking place the week of January 3rd and then subsequently the week of January 10th. Um, and so we'll get that information out to our community so folks who are interested in signing up who are not already part of our testing uh, program will be able to do that as well. And through the county support and uh, through Mount Sinai, our community partner, we have the ability, if 100% if of uh, the community members sign up in the White Plains City School District, 100% will be tested. Um, so it's a, it's a great opportunity and folks are strongly encouraged um, to consider being part of that at following the holiday recess. The importance of doing that is that certainly we're seeing breakthrough infections these days even in, in people who've been vaccinated, so it's important to know. And the ability to opt in is wonderful because uh, with most of us being vaccinated, which is outstanding, you can still potentially be infected and be asymptomatic. But by opting into this testing, you can find out whether you've been infected and whether you're a potential risk to anyone else. Absolutely. Thank, thank you very much, Dr. Stein. Winter weather, uh, just a reminder, we are approaching the winter. Not this week, though. Um, 60s, we'll take it. And uh, of course, we'll, we'll keep watching as we go into January. And tonight is MAS night. Uh, thank you so much, MAS, for being here with us. I was, I was saying to Mr. Janowitz on the way in, it, it's apropos, really, because I have three um, these are my final, but three announcements having all pertaining to MAS. First, uh, we have two folks on the agenda this evening uh, that the Board of Education will be considering for tenure. We have uh, TA, Leonardo Capello uh, from MAS. Congratulations, Leonardo. And Tony Marie Amato, one of our teachers at MAS. Hopefully all goes well during the voting. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, but, one other announcement, uh, Barry W, grade one, won, W-O-N, a full scholarship to any SUNY or CUNY school when he graduates, completely paid for, um, through the New York State Vaccination <laughs> Program route. So congratulations to Barry. Maybe more so congratulations to Barry's mom and dad, uh, because that is not a bad piece of news to get at the first grade level. Uh, so so uh, again, congratulations. Thank you, MAS, for being here with us, celebrating this evening. And of course, a very, very happy holiday uh, to everybody. If you're celebrating Merry Christmas, um, and a happy, healthy, and prosperous new year to, to everyone in White Plains. Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we're on to public participation. Is there any public participation? 
Oh, we have someone standing up. <laughs> only kidding. <laughs> Next, we'll move on to summary, summary action items. We have summary action items four through eight. May I have a motion? Second. Any question? Back. Item B. Uh, Donations at item B, I uh, would like to thank, uh, we're very grateful for our donors. Uh, we have photography equipment from Andrew Courtney for the high school photography program. Really? Uh, $5,000 from Peter Borrego for the James A. Borrego Scholarship Fund. $360.43 from the White Plains Substitute Teachers Association for the James A. Borrego Scholarship Fund. Art supplies from Tova Efron for Ridgeway School. $875 from the Friends of White Plains Public Schools for a program at George Washington, dictionaries for all third graders from the Midwest Chester Elks, and safety supplies from AGI Repair for all of the schools. Thank you very much to all of our donors. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next we move to individual action items, but before we start, may I have a motion for an agenda to the agenda for item F? Um, a recognition um, um, for Michelle uh, Schoenfeld uh, to be uh, named to be added as the Michelle Schoenfeld board member. Uh, so motion. And second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, next under in individual action items, may I have um, the recommended um, that we approve uh, Michael Champis um, for Assistant Director of Athletics. Um, the probationary period is uh, December 14th, 2021 through December 13th, 2025. Assistant Athletic uh, Director, may I have a motion? So moved. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Oh, thank you. I will, I will say that Mike's former superintendent uh, reached out to me a while ago and, and congratulated us. And I love to see that you're already wearing your White Plains mask. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the family. Next we'll go to item B under um, individual action. We have the recommended approval of the appointment of Maggie uh, Rasi Biopo, nurse coordinator, um, district-wide to the pandemic relation position of district COVID-19 coordinator, effective July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022 for the stipend of 20,000. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next, we have the recommended approval to appoint Michelle Schoenfeld to a temporary position to support the district clerk's office. <laughs> January 1st, 2022 through June 30th, uh, 2022 at a stipend amount of 20,000, payable by monthly. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any questions? I think we've made a fine choice. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, item D, we have um, the recommended, uh, the recommended um, recommendation to vote to elect Cheryl Brady, Area 10 Director of the New York State School Board Association. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any questions? On. Do you have questions? No. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Next, we have um, the recommended action for the Board of Education of the White Plain City School District, uh, classifying the project as a type one action and declares its intent to become legal lead agency for CEQA purposes. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Are there any questions? Well, I think we should probably explain what we're doing with the time, because we have a timeline issue. Yeah. 
and we're not necessarily approving a project at this point in time. Right. Yeah, that we're, we're absolutely not approving the project right now, a project right now, but this is the timeline that we need to follow. In fact, on the 20th, Monday, the 20th, we are going to have a, a special Board of Education meeting where the Board of Education will be considering uh, potential options for the master plan projects that we have been talking about over the last several months um, in earnest, but really building over the last couple of years. So the secret process is, is really just to get the paperwork started in terms of the, the project site work. And I see Ralph nodding, which means I'm on the right track. It's always good when council nods, right, Charlie? That's <laughs> gross. Uh, yep. And I think part of this is, again, contemplation of, of replacing of some, space, of some square footage and some spaces. So uh, well, in doing this, we're maintaining our flexibility yeah. mm -hmm. as a district, and we're not compelling ourselves right now to any one decision at this point in time. They yep. just want to make sure that's, uh, for anybody who's viewing and people who look at these things, I, I want to make sure it's important. There's no decisions have been made. This just maintains our flexibility in our decision making as we work through a process that we've been working through. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next, we have item F, the recommended action to approve the naming of our boardroom at Ed House, the Michelle Schoenfeld boardroom. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any questions? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 about um, at the end, I think we've already had our um, board committee reports, the human resources, uh, we met as a board of, of, you know, for human resources and we discussed the, the appropriate topics, which are confidential also. Audit um, and finance met yeah. and we had met with our internal auditors and it's all on the website. Yes. Rosemary, uh, curriculum and instruction, even though it was reported on earlier for our December meeting, when we met in November, it was actually after our school board meeting. So if I may just mention a few things that we discussed uh, in our November meeting, um, which is a STEM ambassadors program, um, which is a grant program with Mercy College. And we have teacher leaders from White Plains, Elmsford, New Rochelle, Austin, Port Chester, and Tarrytown. Um, and it's really to create a cadre of um, STEM teacher leaders um, in best practices. And so we're really proud that we have a very large group of teachers participating. Um, we had an update on a Regeneron program. Um, again, more STEM. Um, they have a day for doing good, and they actually um, recorded STEM experiments for grades K through five. Um, Regeneron volunteers did and uh, had STEM uh, book read-alouds, which were um, available to our students. And then uh, IBM has a Science Saturdays program, and we're able to send 25 fourth and fifth graders to participate to do uh, virtual um, science experiments with IBM researchers. Yeah. Thank you. Could be a dream. Okay. okay. So thank you again, John, John Shepard and John the Savage. Thank you. You always show up, you know, in the nick of time for us. So we thank you and it's good seeing you. Uh, happy holidays to everyone. A happy and safe and peaceful and joyful new year. And without further ado, we'll see you in the new year. May I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a great holiday season, everyone.